Amen. We talked about justice satisfied last week. We talked about the fact that before the cross, justice demanded our death. And mercy demanded our pardon. We talked about that last week. But after the cross, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, justice was satisfied. Because when he was on the cross, he took your sins away, my sins away. So quit feeling guilty about your sins. They have been dealt with at the cross. He dealt with your sins at the cross. Amen. Did we miss uh, the kids' church here? We didn't dismiss them? Okay. Kids, you're dismissed to go to the kids' church. (laughs) Praise God. If you want to be an adult, you could sit with us as long as you don't make any noises. Yeah, us adults, we don't talk during the sermon. I can see you better without the. Yeah. Save your whispering till later. But that's okay if you have to whisper. I mean, if I sat with you and somebody else was preaching, I'd be whispering to my wife, of course. That's okay. That's okay. When you sit behind the chair, you feel like uh, you're a little bit uh, younger and you begin to act like a young person. We all should be young. Feel young. Amen? Amen. So God's justice was satisfied when Christ came, lived, and died, and arose and ascended. We used to be sinners and deserve the punishment. We deserve death, a sentence of death. But Jesus delivered us and set us free. So I don't want to reiterate or go over the whole message from last week. I'd like to continue uh, this week. And let you get the message from last week. It's available. So I want to start with this. This is what transpired on the cross. On our behalf. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us. This is what he did for us. When he was on the cross, he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. He redeemed us. He set us free from the curse of the law. So we're not under the curse anymore. Folks, a believer is not under the curse anymore. If you want to go back and serve the law, you're under the curse. Hello? But you're saved. You're delivered. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And you are not under the law. And therefore, you are not under the curse. You're not under the curse. I want to take you to um, Genesis 48, 14, when Jacob was dying. Before he died, he wanted to bless all his children, and he wanted to bless his grandchildren. And Joseph had his two sons brought to him. And you could see in the picture, I think, 
We have a picture where, where Jacob crosses his hands. Because the one who is in front of him on the right hand is the elder brother, the elder son of Joseph, Manasseh. And the one on his left was Ephraim, who was the younger brother. So what does Jacob do? He was, his eyes were dim. He could not see that well. He was over 100 and 40 years old or whatever. Real old. It was time for him to leave. But before he left, he blesses his kids and his grandkids. And, and here's Manasseh, the elder one, is in front of him. And instead of giving the great blessing to Manasseh, he crosses his hands and puts a blessing on Ephraim and puts, well, he did give blessings to Manasseh, but here's what happened in the New Testament when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Jesus is the elder brother. How many know? We have a brother. His name is Jesus. And he's our elder brother. And the church is the younger brother. The scripture tells us about that. We're the younger, and Jesus is the elder brother. You know what God did? He crossed hands. And he put the blessing on you and I. And he put the curse on Jesus. Our curse was supposed to go to us when upon Jesus. Our sins, Jesus carried in his body on the cross. And he transferred righteousness to us. He gave us his righteousness. So you as a believer are righteous. Go ahead and say, I'm a righteous man or a righteous woman. He made you righteous. Quit going around saying, I'm a sinner. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, do we sin? Yes, we do sin. But we have a high priest. And the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm free from sin. Amen. I'm free from the guilt. Yes. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You're free. You're delivered. You're set free. Don't live in the yesterday anymore. And don't live anxious for tomorrow. Be anxious for nothing, the scripture says. Jesus said, They'll take no thought for tomorrow. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There's enough problems for the day. Don't even add tomorrow to the day because you'll be living two days in one day. That's how people get a heart attack. So 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree. While he was on the tree, while he was on the cross, he bore your sins. I mean, I can picture a, a book bag that some people carry, even adults, a book bag, and it's loaded with sin. Jesus carried the book bag, and in it, all your sins were in there. Every sin, every kind of sin, Amen. adultery, fornication, whatever you want to call it, is there. And Jesus carried it. Don't keep on feeling guilty about the past. The scripture says, but such were some of you. 
You were sinners. But you got redeemed. You're set free. You have the righteousness of God in you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory. Now because he is risen, you know, he arose from the dead. Because he's risen, we're risen with him. We also ascended with him. Guess where you are? Ephesians 2 6. You are seated together with Christ. You are ascended. You have ascended together with him into the heavenly places. If you believe it, things will begin to happen. But some people don't know that. Some Christians are still babes. They don't realize that while they're walking this earth, they're in charge of everything because they are seated on the throne with God. Where is he seated? On the throne. Where did he seat us? With him. We're seated. We're crowned. We're given authority and power. We reign together with him in this life. Right now. I just don't want you to be walking around defeated. Every time circumstance comes your way and, and afflictions come your way or storms come your way, you put your head down and say, that's it, God doesn't love me. No, God is waiting for you to rise up in faith. And declare that you have authority over those things. Isn't that what he did with, with the disciples when, he, when they woke him up? He was sleeping during the storm. He's, he, he turned to the disciples. He says, where, 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 just tell me, where is, where in the world is your faith? What have I been teaching you? Why didn't you put it into practice? Why do you wake me up? In other words. You're in control. You and I are in control. We used to be without control when we were living in sin. There was no control. Hallelujah. So we're seated together with him. We're, we're resurrected with him. So that's why the Bible says, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So the question today is, how do we maintain our focus on things above? You got to practice practical things as a Christian. Number one, rejoice in the Lord always. Did you ever go through a period where you were not rejoicing? Listen, he didn't say when things are fine and dandy and things are good. That you rejoice. No, no, no. He says rejoice in the Lord always. In every circumstance. In every situation. Don't ever lose your joy. But your joy is in the Lord. Who gives you strength. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Number two. Offer supplication. And thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known 
unto the governor. Let your request be made known to the mayor. Let your request be made known unto God. Glory. Number three. Think right thoughts. If I may put it in another way, think positive thoughts. Positive. Think positively. Philippians 4, 8 in the Amplified. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy, anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Think continually on these things. So your mind has to be controlled by the word. Before you got saved, your mind was controlled by the lust of the flesh. Now you're changing. Glory. Now you belong to New Testament church. Glory be to God. And you're walking with the Lord. And your mind is thinking about things that are lovely and good and pure and positive. And if you don't think that way, don't ever say that the pastor taught you otherwise. My wife gets irked with me because I, I'm always positive about things. I mean, you got to be negative sometime, you know. I, I don't want to be. And here it tells you not to be negative at all. Think right thoughts. That means you got to work on your mind. You got to let the word of God fill your mind because it was... Uh, Consumed with the world and the lusts of the flesh before, but now from this moment on, you need to be filled with the Spirit and let the Word of God penetrate through your mind and your heart and your whole being. Praise God. I mean, you got to think positive all the time. Or you want me to tickle your ears and tell you it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Number four, practice what you have learned. You see, you're, you're learning something today, right? Are you learning anything? Are you learning something? Yes. Well, what do you mean? Uh, well, that's a weak yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Practice what you have learned. Philippians 4.9. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do means be doer of the word not hearers only do and the God of peace shall be with you now if God be for me who can be against me you want the God of peace to be with you all the time then you gotta do the things that are right that are pleasing in his sight which you have learned and heard. What did you hear and learn? Well, rejoice in the Lord always. That's, that was point number one, very, very important. Rejoicing all the Lord, in the Lord all the time. 
Amen? You rejoice in the Lord all the time. Offer your supplications before God and with thanksgiving. That means you ask God for something and then thank him for the answer. And from now on, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I received it. I thank God for it in Jesus' name. That's it. So practice that. And then number five. Live in Christ. Philippians 3.3. 3. For we who are born again have been reborn from above. Spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. And are that true circumcision. The true circumcision. There's a circumcision that's not the true. The, the circumcision of the flesh is not the true circumcision. So can I ask you, what is the true circumcision? The true circumcision is what? The circumcision of the heart. You're born from above. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Whether you're circumcised in the flesh or not. You're circumcised in the heart. That's a real, true circumcision. The Bible says a Jew is one who is not circumcised outwardly, but the one who is circumcised inwardly in the heart and not in the flesh. That's a real Jew. You're all Jews. And that's not a curse. That's a blessing. All the word Jew means is people of God. Yehudim. Yehuda is God praiser and thanksgiver. And Yehudim is taken from Judah, from the tribe of Judah. And they call them Jews. What is a Jew? Is one who is circumcised in the heart, not in the flesh. Amen? That's somewhere in Romans. You can do a little homework and find it. I'll, I'll tell you an easy way. Go to, go to Google and write that down and it'll tell you where it is. Google everything, man. <laughs> this is a generation of Google. The Googlers. You are all Googlers. Jews, Googlers. What you've, what you've heard today is unlike any other time. You are Googlers. That's why I have a phone here with me. So I can Google. In case I get stuck somewhere and I, I lost my train of thinking, I'll Google it. Say, where was I? <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, I have to read you something that I did not plan on, but, you know, living in Christ, living in Christ is... Uh, for we who are born again and have been born from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose, and our true circumcision, who worship in spirit and the spirit of God and glory and take pride and exult in Christ Jesus and place no confidence in the flesh. We don't place confidence in the flesh. But you know what happened? To us. Let me show you what happened to us. You see, some people say, well, you know, I, I'm a sinner saved by grace. No, no, no. You're already saved by grace, and therefore you are righteous. Hello? 
You, uh, I'm a dirt, I'm a worm. No, no, no. You are a sanctified worm. <laughs> a sanctified dirt. That's different. Amen. So in, in Romans chapter 5, Pastor Mark was talking about it a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week, I don't know. No, it was two weeks ago. And then, and it stuck in my mind. <clears throat> and verse 17, if by one man's offense, death reigned. So this one man's offense is Adam. By his death, by his offense, death reigned. But notice, the word is reigned, not reigns with an S. It's reigned, past tense. Death used to reign. But now we got life. Now we walk in the newness of life. We are risen together with Christ into the newness of life. This is what water baptism is about. It's symbolic, but it's symbolic of death, folks. It's symbolic of resurrection. Whatever takes place. Let me read a few verses here. Believers, uh, uh, Romans 6, verses 1 through 14. I can't read the whole thing, but believers are dead to sin and alive unto God. Verse 6 says, what shall we say to all of this? Should we continue in sin and practice sin as a habit so that God's gift of grace may increase and overflow? Certainly not. How can we, the very ones who died in sin, he, who died to sin, who died to sin, we already died to sin, Continue to live in it any longer. When we got water baptized, we were buried. See, it's a burial. It's like going under. Why do you think it's not a sprinkling in the Bible? A sprinkling is man-made ideas. You take the cup and you sprinkle somebody. Okay, Jesus went into the water, down into the water, and came back out, out of the water. It was not sprinkling. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. If you would like to support our ministry, please text NTC Gives to 77977. And please join us each week for Sunday school at 9 and service at 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloom, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.